as rain or shine goes up against Barangay Ginebra tonight. Keep in mind that we are at the midway point of the classification phase. 14 games. Well, some teams have eight games, some have seven. But winning is important, especially as games continue to lessen and positioning is important. Right now, everyone's looking at the standings. Everyone is standings watching. And for these two teams playing today, they have a different uh, way of looking at the standings. On one end, you have Rainer Shine. They're looking at the top of the standings because what they're looking at is that opportunity to have that outright semifinal slot. On the other side, you have Barangay Hinebra. They've only played seven games so far, but they've only had two wins to show for that. And you can see that the bottom two of the standing is shaping up to be a four-way battle at this point with Barangay Hinebra, Coca-Cola, Alaska, and Baraco Bull. That's one of the things that you want to avoid that bottom two spot. I know Patricia has the story on this, but I think we should announce quick, quickly on that Ginebra will be going without an import in this particular game. That is significant when you consider the point you were making that they are somewhere down at the bottom compared to their opponent that is looking at the top of the standings. Now, you know, their import before, he was, he was uh, doing a lot for his team, 27 points for uh, Rod Neely and uh, he wasn't bad in terms of looking at his stats he had 27 points 16 rebounds and five assists a game but at the same time he was a type of import that really slows down the offense nothing no flow could be uh, gotten by the rest of his teammates and uh, Ginebra made the choice to replace him sadly for them that replacement uh, didn't work out and we will have the full story and the, it's an intriguing interesting and I learned from you as we were preparing for this game how not to run in the afternoon and run, run, run. Artadi is off and running. And if there ever was a time when Barangay never needed its fans, needed its uh, gung ho spirit, it probably will be tonight. And a 3 2 ball game as it, this is swiftly changed. We are just in the first minute. Importante rito yung Barangay Ginebra. Hindi agad magpasilong with the import situation. Uh, they just have to play at best as bring their a game no matter what now what they have to do is to remain close throughout the three quarters all the way till the fourth and uh, hopefully in the fourth quarter try to steal one but, but remember the last time that a team played without an import was here in this fiesta conference that was alaska against san miguel the first outing of both teams san miguel didn't have an import san miguel won over alaska in that game that was the big game jonas villanueva played uh, the coming out game if you would like to call it that Calder Brand's first attempt is off to the left side, and it is the ball of the Elasto Painters. Norwood, Luis Ibanez, Mercado, Isip on the floor. Ibanez from the side that will not bite, and it's on the ground. We're pushing hard. Lubin. Defenders loses his footing, but a foul has been observed. Uh, very early you can see Renebras they're trying to run try to get those easy opportunities especially without that import and Jai Lewis on the other side they know it's going to be quite difficult to get their points off that uh, their half court set and we know with uh, JJ Helterbrand out there for his team he know you know that he can set up his teammates just like that one with Rafi Rivas coming out that screen roll so it will be up to the locals uh, to be able to Match up against the import of rain or shine, Jai Lewis, and you know, sometimes you bring a mindset into the game. Okay, kaya yan. I mean, some mindset na tagalit tayo rito, wala tayong import ka agad eh. But it works, works both ways. Uh, for Barangay Ginebra, they're thinking uh, they have to think positive and they're hoping to steal this one. Obviously, odds are stacked against them. But for rain or shine, they cannot let down their, gu their guard and the... Uh, uh, have that opportunity or give that opportunity for Hinebra to give them a lucky punch. Well, it's come to me too, and I keep mentioning that they've lost their last two games. I should mention that, that he's, uh, they have a nice coaching, good coaching staff. <laughs> but they have lost their last two games after winning four straight. So they're trying to get back on the winning track. Uh, just one of the odds stacked up against Barangay Hinebra. But they tonight. did they did face Seth, they did face some tough opponents in those last two games. They faced Santa Lucia, which is up there in the standings, as well as San Miguel. So they're not allowing themselves to lose to the teams that they're supposed to beat. And that's what they're hoping that won't happen today. Of course, this is the second meeting between these two teams, given the tournament format that we have. Those of opposite groups uh, meet twice, and you meet your group mates only once. Three all count. Barangay never trying to work on its sniping from the outside. They tried to slam Amaril, that is, tries to slam it. 
but it looks like they'll get to keep it. Earlier in the ball in the evening, we had Alaska winning against Barraco, 100 to 90. Alaska needed that win. They're at the bottom of the standing, so they need something to boost their spirits. In the meantime, Arcadi tries to keep it alive. He succeeds. Full shot clock, a fresh one. Tubid looking for some help. Rivas, Artadi thought about it. Besides, the only inside this shot at the last moment, they lose it. Here's the Soul Train. Soul Americano. It's just all energy, Mr. Explosiveness. You know, once he puts his, squ his shoulder square to the basket, pretty hard to stop it because of all that strength coming from Sol Mercado. Artadi succeeds from the side, and the ball game finds Barangay Ginebra up by a point. They need their outside sniping here tonight to be red hot. And they've always had trouble with that inside game, and uh, even with uh, Rodini was here, a lot of them were playing from the outside. Good help coming from Ronald Tubit, but like you said, they're going to need that outside shot, especially that three-point shot, which is basically the, the biggest equalizer in yes. uh, basketball. Absolutely. Well said. And we have Tubid disappointed that the foul was called as he tried to help out. Look at this. Lewis secures the first. This ball game stands at six apiece. Sometimes, means and bagalam mo lang import sa kalaban ng major. As you said, it works both ways. Ano bagaman na si Kaya pero does does not work in favor of the team that has an import. Usually, the first couple of minutes, or especially the first couple of minutes of the first quarter, really dictates what's going to happen. And you can see if the other team, especially if the team without the import, remains positive, you would think that the, they're going to make a game out of it. Maria ended up with nothing on that particular journey as Magdalo scouts around the horizon and they will opt to settle what was that what was in the mind of some guy must have the ball must have slipped to his hands well, they were hoping for an alley you play uh Actually, Norwood had his uh, eyes up uh, but uh, Sol Mercado a little bit too much coffee on that path <laughs> <laughs> I like that <laughs> Manias kick outside. Lewis says, I have all day to shoot. It won't stay down, and Rivas picks it up. Eight and a half to go. Tied ball game at six. I thought he thought about it. Just run earlier. Besides, he takes it back. Got it! You know, the scouting reporter Paul Artari has always said, let him make that three-point shot, let him beat you. But he is starting to hit those shots. Once he starts hitting that first one, you know that he has a lot more confidence, and you, you have to step out just a little bit and try to force him and try to make him think about that three-point shot. Lewis takes care of the inside. Artadi just going back to him briefly. Eight of the nine points posted so far by Barangay Ginebra. Alton Brad trying to dance with Mercado. Mamarel peeks inside. The intended pass is deflected. Yeah, one of the things Sev mo mo really noticeable with Barangay Ginebra, better ball movement at this point. I really felt with Rodney in that team, namamatay yung bola, hindi maganda yung ikot, because Rodney is a type of guy needs to dribble to get his momentum, and every time he does that, the offense of Barangay Ginebra really stalls. And right now, a bit more fluid with uh, Rodney out of their lineup. Watching, what are you going to do next? Since it's not going to come back to us. Mech, by the way, in the ball game for the first time. Here we go to Reyes. Kicks it outside. By Ray with some uh, active feet. Inside action and Lewis backing it against the glass. And Lewis holding on. To the bridge of his nose. Two bid with the ball, he's second. Yeah, you can see that Barangay Hineva, they will be forced to double, especially the post guys of Rain or Shine and uh, Jai Lewis uh, not respecting that double of Ronald Tubin and getting a three point play opportunity. 25 points per ball game, 63% from the free throw line, averaging almost. Oh, just over 18 rebounds per game. You know, that's the big stat right there, Sev. That 18 rebounds coming from one person. Five guys may not even average 18 rebounds a game. Five guards. 
722 remaining. 11 by Count. Rainer Schein is in front, but not for long. We're all lining up together. Davis with his first field goal. He has three points, and Mank is there by his lonesome, but passes it to the wrong party. Here's Gabe. He decides to wait for the rest of the gang. Reyes shopping around. Can't find anybody open. Mercado begging for the ball. Turn around, shot by Reyes. A little too strong, but he gets a good bounce. It trickles in. This big guy has always had that soft touch. And when he pops that shot, he has a chance usually. But usually that's what he goes to. Never, not, doesn't really have that power big man move. Usually he likes that jump shot. And it has worked for him. He's not that uh, muscle man uh, type of big guy. As Meng tries to create the opening, overshoots it. Ball is being deflected about, and they will recycle. But Helfi Brandt thought about it. Ooh, Mercado is in the path. Tries to hook it back, but he's on the line. Good time as any. Yes, at the 621 mark, we will take a break. Last two painters with a slight advantage. Big Dome, I should give it to you quickly though. Patricia. Well, here's a lowdown on what went down with Hinebra's import who got sent home just hours after arriving here in the Philippines. According to Coach John with Chico, two doctors and a trainer guaranteed that Ryan Humphreys, the banger from Tulsa, was actually 6'6". So in good faith, they flew him in. But what happened was that the PBA in their official measurement in the morning that he arrived measured him 7 sixteenths taller than the actual limit. And so what happened was they had to send him home even though he never insisted that he be measured after practice or in the afternoon and I think Jason can share with you the theory on that one on that on why that would have been important now Humphrey took that 15 hour flight back he never now doesn't know if they have the luxury to wait and find the perfect import they fear that they might just settle for whoever is available by Monday Sev Jason you want to expand on that and I think the point you made when the measurement was either in the morning or in the afternoon and I think there's just a theory, and uh, theory, I, I remember when we were playing, we had an import that might not make it in terms of uh, with his height. And the thing that the trainer said was to get a couple of laps in around the track, and then after after getting those laps in, have himself measured, and to hope that uh, he'd be uh, that would you know shrink, shrink him okay. by a couple of tenth of an uh, inch. Yung kailangan para oh, yeah. para yung, ano, seven sixteenth of an inch. I've seen boxers lose two pounds in, in a matter of moments, but you know, interesting uh, 14 thing in height and uh, the incredible shrinking and uh, the reduction in height. Meron nga nagsasabi, no, whether most, what's the, the usual theory? Hapon dapat, kung gusto niyo makapasa, hapon. But, but, but from what I heard is, and uh, from experience is, to get some laps in, paguri mo yung okay. sarili mo, and try to burn some fat, and hopefully, um, uh, yun na nga, na iiksi ka ng konti. The others would insist, na, umaga natin po, medyo, Para, <laughs> 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 hindi po masayon. But look at this. But that's just a theory. theory that's, uh, that's, that's why it's called a theory. 13 apiece. Rafi Rivas unable to secure it at close range. Oh boy, this is not working. Norwood flying, nothing there. For impact ang habol ng uh, Rain or Shine dun eh. Para medyo mag-break itong spirit ng uh, barangay. Pero ito, nice passing. When they are fluid, they are a joy to watch. And we were talking about how good it seems the uh, offense of Inebra looks right now. Out of those six field goals that they've had, four of those have come via an assist. So definitely better ball movement on the part of the Jin Kings. Raynor Shine looking for the target. Here's Meg and the rest of the crowd trying to bristle. are now beginning to bristle with excitement. Elton Brad wants to give it to Meg and a foul off the arm of Meg by Reyes. Let's check out this interesting piece of action. Uh, KFC delivers us into the quarter. Pagpa delivers a KFC just dial 887-8888. KFC, it's finger looking good. Mank is going to receive a lot of passes like that here tonight. 
By the way, one of our referees, uh, Boy Cruz, of course, the veteran, he is uh, actually celebrating his wedding anniversary today, but he has got to work. And he'd just like to say hi to the wife, Mrs. Raquel Cruz, na uuwi siya pagkatapos ng laro. Congratulations to uh, Boy Cruz, uh, one of our uh, more established uh, There referees. he is, bottom of your screens, working on this uh, very important day. Mamaya, magkikita na sila ni Pia ba, Pia? Nagugulo ka ha? Hindi, Raquel, Raquel. Bahala ka. Raquel. Bahala ka. 1813. Buti na lang, hindi ka na naglalaro. O, assistant coach. Ang naman tala. Mainit. Mainit yung mama, ano? Mainit. 7 points na si Mank. Well, he's coming here averaging only 4 points and 4 rebounds. But yes, he did only play 2 games of the season so far. They're gonna look for help. And you look at the... Stat sheet on Menk or uh, his resume probably has the best resume with his two MVPs or one MVP rather. Eight to nothing run. Lanyete, by the way, is already in the game. And Intel says, let's recycle. As the shot clock is at 18, 3 and 13 to go. The defense are already assembled for uh, Rain or Shine, actually. Here's JC, a shot from the outside. It will bounce in. Plus a foul. Is it a three? Yes, it is. Now here, Seb, this is really where the problem starts. You come in, if you're rain or shine, you're thinking, well, I'm, I at least have an import. I have a big advantage coming to this game. And all of a sudden, Barangay Hinebra playing real hot. Now Barangay Hinebra takes shots that fall in. And on your side, you feel that you're making a lot of fouls that are not smart fouls. And uh, all of a sudden, Hinebra's up by 11. The weight in the world is on rain or shine, and Hinebra playing very loose. And that was compounded by Aranya fouling Intal. However, the free shot, not the free throw, rather not delivered upon. 24 to 30 is the count. My age showing by calling it the free shot. <laughs> 2:54 to go. Here's Reyes. By the way, Wayne Wright is already in the ball game. Here's Ryan Aranya, T.Y. Tang, Tang trying to lose the D. His jumper. T-Y-10. 2.37 remaining. Here's Lagnete looking for some help. Here's Wilson. Helter Brand still on the floor. Mank with a good turnaround. It won't bite, however. He regains possession. Uses the glass. Hey, 26-15, and he has nine points. Blazing start by Eric Mack. Here's Aranya. They want to go to the import. They send it outside to T.Y. Tang. Knocks it in. T.Y. Tang, three. T.Y. Tang, he hasn't got a lot of minutes this conference. He had a great first conference. This conference, a lot of his minutes eaten up by Don Dulay. But when I'm looking at the bench of Rain or Shine, I can't actually, cannot actually see Don Dulay on that bench. Or actually... Well, he's right there, but he did not start. Usually, that's a guy that starts for Rain or Shine. Yes. In the meantime, Intal with a tip in. It is a 10-point distance. Wainwright to Aranya. They want to go to Lewis. The dish off over to Reyes. He floats. He misses the shot, and it's picked up by Intal. Here's Lanyete who pushes it gently. Algebra thought about it, but Aranya is close by. JC Intal lets it fly. Too strong. Wilson tries to track it down. He does. Alter Bren, lots of time on the shot clock. Intel, one more three, knocks it in. Yeah, for Barangay Hinebra, the key there is a couple of those threes that JC Intel has taken, open looks, and they're getting the shots that they want at the moment. 31 points, that's a lot of points for a team that's going all Filipino. And with 107 still to play, we take a break at the action. Getting a good feed from Tang, but couldn't sink the hook shot. It's 31 to 18, 13 point distance. Biggest lead established by Barangay Hinebra. 
And looking at the rebounds right there on your screen, Seb. Barangay Ginebra actually is a team that is out rebounding Rainer Shine and all of those second chance points, 12 of them for Barangay Ginebra. Two things working for them, of course, they're getting those second chance points. That's 12 points plus they're shooting 50% from the three point line, Whoa. six out of 12. And Raynor Chan, which is, I think, number three in three-point shooting in the tournament, has really not hit anything from that distance. They may be a bit of Gatorade, the official sports drink of the PBA. Zardinia might help. You know, I was actually looking at the stats, and I thought at the beginning that this was going to be a very bad matchup for Barangay Hinebra because Barangay Hinebra is the worst team in defending that three-point shot. You did mention Rainer Shine yesterday, the third best at hitting that three-point shot. But the continuation to that is they're the team that takes the most three-point shots. So, but so far, that three-point shot has been the weapon of Barangay Hinebra, not Rainer Shine. 232 attempts. That's 20... Uh, 83 out of 232. You, uh, best at three-point shooting is talking text. Home percentage yes. when it goes up. And, uh, yeah. But your point really is daming attempts yes. uh, nilo launch nila, no? This is a team that averages about 30 attempts a game. Oh, and, yes. uh, so far, they've only jacked up seven and made two. As we wind down to the final 20 seconds, Arang is fast, Makana is there. And look at Wilson. Wilson rushing, rushing, rushing. Drove it hard against Wayne Wright. The follow-up will trickle out. There's Tang. T.Y. stretches to a halt to Wayne Wright. Reyes looking for somebody to pass to. The clock is down to a second. I don't think no one knows it. Yep, no one was aware of it. And the end of the first quarter, it's Ryan just disappointed that he could not launch. Checking out the uh, Motorlite leading scorers. Look at this. Nothing but Kings. Press Kings. Tatlong King. Panal. Pwede na yun. Kahit anong laro. Magbabalik tayo. 31-18 ang score natin second quarter. It's just around the corner. Back with us, and again, I'm always under instructions. Bilis ang koro ang turnover siya dahil pag-uusapan ni Patricia ang keys to winning. Well, let's talk about Eric Mang and Billy Mamariel, and there you'll find their keys to winning. Eric Mang, who has just gotten back in this conference after a long bout with ankle sprain, says he's never really played against an import that big, that tall, and that quick. Of course, he's talking about the quick feet and all of 290 pounds of Jai Lewis. Now, for Billy Mamariel, he has played against Jai Lewis before and was able to score 13 against him, but that was when Rod Neely was around, and things are different now. But remember, he shares that they got to play a more disciplined game because with Rod Neely there, they just centered on him. Everyone now has got the scoring load for rain or shine. They just admit that it's never a walk in the park against Ginebra. They just need to focus more on dropping the ball to Jai. They got to beat the zone by running, and they must also limit the wing scoring, which they haven't been doing as well because JC and Tal was pretty hot from the wing. Now, defense has been a problem for them. Coach has a rule. No intensity on defense, automatic bench. Seb, Jason. And rain or shine has discovered that they're not even in the park uh, because what a guy Ginebra has simply gone to town taking care of the inside, the outside, some numbers on your screens, the first quarter shooting. I believe that was a three-point shooting, six out of five, two out of seven. Just going back to the point that Patricia made on the side of Rainer Shine, uh, Coach Kalai talking about defense for his team. Look at the stats, and actually, his team, if they limit the opponents under 100 points, they're 4-0. and The moment the, the other team touches 100, they're 1-3. and So they re really defense, a big key for uh, Rainer Shine. And, you know, in fairness to Barangay Hinebra, they're coming off a win also, although they did have an import in that game. Before we went into our break, they won in Panabo, Davao del Norte against Barango. So, pick up sila, especially coming after five straight losses. Well, it was a big win to arrest that slide, but except after that game, 20 games later, they play again. This is their first game oh, after 20 time. games Matagal and matagal. almost 30 games, or 30 days rather, since they were last year in Araneta, Araneta Coliseum. Oh. On the other hand, I, I, th I know that Rain or Shine likes this venue. Uh, they seem to be... Uh, mas madala silang manalo rito kaysa sa ibang venue natin. 
Matala, here's the hook shot that finds a mark, Eddie Laure, the dying art of the magnificent hook shot. First two points by Laure. Helterbrand's version hasn't knocked it in cleanly from the outside. Actually, J.J. Helterbrand, the only guy that struggled from that three-point line, one out of six. The rest of the guys, 50% or better. And Tal managing to track that down. Pakana is in the game, and uh, they'll try to settle down. Here's Mamaril. Back up, up against Reyes. He got the opening. Now, so far, Seb, everything working for Barangay Never. Inside, outside. Of course, we talk about their outside shooting. But that inside game has opened up that three-point shot for them. Look at this, the big man, J.R. Reyes, with a three. He has now collected five in this first half. 8.58 to go. And off the pass, we have a foul. Happy foul on number two, Eddie Lowry. Lowry will collect his first. Again, if you just joined us earlier tonight, we had Alaska winning over Barako 100 to 90 was the score earlier tonight. Major mag improve ang konti ang Alaska. They become three and six uh, while uh, bumagsak na rin ang uh, Barako at two and six. Some changes being made in the lineup. Revis and Tubid, who started out earlier, are back on the floor. What is not working for Rain or Shine? I know Barangay Hinebra has hit the outside shots. What's not clicking as far as Rain or Shine is concerned? Well, for Rain or Shine, it seems that one of their main weapons that they really go to is that three-point shot. And I've seen them pass up that three-point shot very oh, often. Yes. Sometimes when your opponent changes or you feel that there's a weakness in your opponent there's a tendency to over concentrate on that position you can see that most of their shots they're trying to go inside yes that's good but even when they go inside they've gotten like mid-range shots not like shots going to the baskets or uh, layups it's anticipate them barangay he never like what they did to Lauri. They, they gobbled him alive on the curl there is a foul. It's a major like early offense in Barangay Hinebra. Bago pa magset ang Rain or Shine. Of course, defensively is another problem for Rain or Shine is that uh, they, they seem to not match the intensity of Barangay Hinebra. The big guys of Barangay Hinebra are beating them up at the post, while the shooters of Barangay Hinebra are being left open as well. Lewis with foul number one. Mamarel trying to capitalize on the early offense. They're running, and Mamarel misses the first free throw. Gatorade is the official sports drink of the PBA. Is it in you? Salang Sang is in the game for the very first time tonight. One from the stripe, eight and a half remaining, 37-25 in case you just joined us. Barangay Hinebra going without an import tonight. The imports who arrive, Humphrey, disallowed by just a fraction of an inch. Asaranya, he loves that inside, but he's going to be called for the offensive foul. Offensive foul, Ryan Aranya. is not going to be happy with that call. After getting that rebound, it seemed that uh, Ronald Tubid may have... Uh, Got it away with a little bit of some acting out there. You but, know, uh, you know, I, th that's a lot of respect well. that Ronald <laughs> Tubit also gets on the defensive end. Let me see Aranya, even when he was playing college ball, I knew he would have, had a, he would have a place here in the pros. He knows for the ball niya sa ilalim. But he's playing larger than his height, actually. Salansang so thought about it, decided against it. Sol Mercado has not managed to really erupt here. It had one bust out. Salansang set a bit of a set shot, wide and long. Kung golf yung slice, slice. Oh, oh nga, shank ng konti. <laughs> yung shank hindi naman aabot sa ring. Ah, wala ka sa tira ko, butterfly. <laughs> Still make that simple mistake sometimes. In the meantime, the ball is lost by the Kings. They're ahead by 12, largest at 15. Salansang deciding against any offensive move goes to Mercado. Salansang says not quite, how will they call this? This could be interesting as Boy Cruz makes this call. Now, Ronald Tubin is going to get called for that foul because after he fell, still took down uh, Sol Mercado. Tubin seems like he's wincing in 
Kane. But for Ronald Dubin, he had that big game in their last game, in their last win. In this game so far, he's scoreless. But you know with Ronald Dubin, you're going to get more than scoring. The intensity that he brings to the court and the passion is something that the team really needs. And uh, for Barangay Ginebra, all those uh, little things, they sure need it in tonight's game. Pag nalolo ba ito itong Ginebra, recharge lang ito ng si Tubid. Ang dami lang pang recharge eh. Oh, they're back. Meron silang Tubid, meron din silang Latadi. Lagnete. That kind of player, they like that. Tubid picking up the errant shot. Even this guy can do it. That might have been a bit of traveling there. Algebra, long distance call. Somebody home. Has six in the game. Now finally hits it. That's his second field goal. Both of them are three-point shots. He's been camping at that three-point shot. Hasn't been lucky. Finally gets one. Gets another one, rather. Wayne Wright's attempt falls short. And here comes Selterbrand. Goes up. Scoops it. And 40-25 is our current count. It's 6.47 to go. Jason Webb is with us tonight together with uh, Patricia Eason and later on we'll hear from Cheska Litton as well. We've got the ceasefire on the floor. The kind of timeout we're going to get is... A full timeout. Yes, it's the sixth minute anyway. We'll be back. Sending it now. And ako bakit pag yung mga reporters interview, quick turnover daw. Sige nga, Cheska Litton. When I spoke to Eric Meng before the game, he thought that it would be a rough night at the office with Jai Lewis on the floor. But he also said that, you know, there's no pressure on their team now because everyone is expecting them to lose without an import. His other concern was the fact that he may not be in shape because he was gone for a month. And after that month-long break, he also only got to practice for a week with his team. During that month, you know, he just had to do rehab for his ankle. He had to keep his weight down. And he hated the fact that he had to diet and that he had to stay away from his favorite food for a month. Favorite food would be? dessert and that is very tough for someone with a sweet tooth like Eric but he, so far all that sacrifice seems to have paid off because so far he's got nine points and four rebounds in this game seven Jason major impact on the game so far question Jan ano klaseng dessert ang paborito nito eh meron mahilig sa cake meron mala ice cream lagay ko ice cream ice cream mahirap magsabi nila nakialam nakialam Okay, alam. 42-28. But if you don't diet, you know, I mean, that's hardly the topic for me to talk uh -huh. about. But you know, I think many of the athletes will say that it has to be a combination. Because eh. when you get to the end, you can't get We have uh, a referee's whistle halting the action. You know, especially for Eric Mackey, every conference, he probably have to mark down five games or seven games that he misses. He uh -huh. usually misses a number of games and siguro yung favorite taro niya mananak yun daw eh o kamote kyu marami rin sa Michigan eh mananak yun kamote kyu may naglala may naglala ko pag hapon ano mananak yu with the with the matching accent banana kyu banana kyu kamote kyu galing businessin mo nga pa 42-29, pero yung impact ni Meng, ano, yung balik niya, malaking bagay para sa barangay dahil, you know, he also plays almost like an import. Lost control of the basketball, however. How is that, how hard is it to get back your timing in actual game situations, Jason? Well, you know, as long as you play good the first couple of minutes, you can always write off that excuse. If you play bad the first couple of minutes, you can always say that, but my timing is off. So it's really how you start that game. And for Eric Mack, he started well, so meron na siya kaagad na ipon, so madali na siya makabawi. Shot clock is a problem. Norwood with the dance. Almost had it, but just not squared for the shot because of the time pressure. The ball, however, will be retained by 
Reynolds shined because Rivas could not cling on to the ball. And you know, going back to that, when every time I got injured, I always liked the first game back. The second game back seemed like it was worse because mas um, bug yung katawan mo, and you just—it was just my per personal uh, feeling. Is it because you're conscious of the injury? Yes, I think that first game back, you you, you have that excuse that you were injured. Yeah, okay. That second game back, uh, usually you usually don't play as well as your first game because there's less expectation in your first game. Okay. Well, some players who try to get back, uh, and Eric Meg, I'm sure the fans welcome him him back. Now, Rainer Shine needs something here, especially on the defensive end. Oh, Mercado could so erupt here. And the sole train with a seven point cluster so far. 44 32. Hello. Hello. Oh, you talk about all the points that Eric Menke is getting right now, but I think it goes back to getting the ball in the hands of JJ Helterbrand. When Rod Neely was there, Rod Neely had 70% of the share of the basketball. Now with J.J. Helterbrand, they're running the same plays, they're running that screen roll, Eric Mech slipping that screen and roll, J.J. Helterbrand getting that assist. So right now, you're putting the ball in the hands of your smartest or your best player that makes decisions, and that's J.J. Helterbrand for Barangay Ginebra. I remember when I was a Quentin player, I had a lot of fun, I had a lot of fun, and now there's better fluidity. But you know, it's a matter of how long they can sustain this also, not only in this game, but you can't go on without an import in this particular kind of conference. Somebody Dao is coming uh, uh, along, we, we will find that out in the days to come. Meanwhile, Lewis, oh, close range, no, not there. 14-point game, Intal had his contribution in the first quarter. Rivas trying to provide a shield. Counter brand. Major Nakamale choreography. Nine seconds remaining on the shot clock. He will have to let it fly, but he decides to pass off at the last moment. Wayne Wright. He can't dribble anymore. I, know, I think you know that play right there is uh, very evident of what's happening here in the first half. Barangay never had three guys down. Rainer Shine had one guy running on the fast break. The rest of the four guys walking down the court. Obviously, Barangay Nebra is the team with much more passion here in the first half. Oh, that's a good point. That is well said. As Norwood tries this attack, does not work. Here's Intel. Will not force the issue, but look at this trail job. Well done by Meng. Rain or shine. Boy, being pulverized here in this first half. I'll play it. It's now 48-32. We'll take a look at that last sequence. It's a 30-second time. Watch this. Right there, that pass by JC and Tal. Eric Meng beating everyone down, everyone down the court. Jai Lewis not even in the picture. So again, it works both ways. Not only is Barangay Ginebra beating them on transition defensively, even on offense, they're getting the fast break point. Oh, look at this. Uh, this is not, they're going, this was the play you described earlier. This is actually our KFC delivery assist of the quarter. Makwede delivers a KFC. Just now, 887, 8888. Actually, pwede hindi ko na sabihin to. I-memorize nyo na lang. Ipasok nyo sa cellphone nyo ito. Tapos, isama nyo na rin ang KFC. It's finger licking good. Ayan. Now, going back to that play, you just saw J.J. Helterbrand. He has seven assists here in this first quarter. And, you know, when you put seven assists in, most of those assists going to the guys like Eric Menk already has 15 points. Clearly his best game of the conference. Yes. And this first half, now to three and a half. Marcado. But you sense a certain tentativeness on the part of Rain or Shine. But I mean, the way they want to flow with their offense, it's not just flowing like they normally do. You know, that goes back to that uh, problem in which when you feel that you are the team that's supposed to win and all of a sudden the team without the import has you by 16 points all of a sudden napakaluit na nung ring and laki na nung pressure on you guys and I, I, I believe right now Rain or Shine just, ha just has they know that they have that 8-0 run in them but they have to start uh, sharing that basketball right there one of the very few assists of Rain or Shine they actually have 6 assists JJ Helterbrand has one more than the entire team. <laughs> Salon Sang with the first, this first pair of points. Samantala, I like this expression I learned. 
Ah, ito. A few years ago. Ten years naman. That's not few, but yung parang batya daw yung ring. Minsan, the players, di ba yung sasabi mo sa kabila, parang yung sikip. Minsan naman, kahit ano yung hockey, pumapasok sa kabila. Kamer, nangyayari na rin sa akin yun. Parang yung ring, anlaki, parang batya. Yung problema, yung bola, parang anlaki rin, kaya hindi rin pumasok. Sato lang. <laughs> Masikip pa rin. Jambol. <laughs> Lahat ng kakampi ko sabi, parang batsa na daw yung ring. Subukan ko nga. <laughs> parang hindi. They give it to Salansang, his second personal foul. Intal made an impact early on in the first quarter. Bakana is back in the game and Tubid uh, is out of the lineup for the time being. You know, Coach Kaloy Garcia, he did mention, he, he did just get a uh, warning. Oh, that's what the, it was all about. Yes. yes. And, you know, right now he feels that he has to do something for his team to wake up because this is a 16-point lead. They've given up 50 points. They've only matched 34. And their, their, their uh, offense being, being stymied by the defense of uh, Barangay Hinebra. Salansang, what's that low lift, huh? Ooh, valiant effort. Timeout, but I'm right, he never did. Kings will utilize the timeout ahead by 16 with 2 and 50 to go. They are in control of this first half. with Lewis uh, netting it and it's trimmed down to 14 but this has been a familiar refrain in this first half this lead that has flirted from 11 to 16 it's Barangay Nebra for every basket that Rain or Shine comes up with at least two come from Barangay Nebra at least in this first half you know, Barangay Nebra had that big run at the end of that first quarter they had that 20 to 5 run and ever since that time they have managed to keep it at a double-digit advantage, like you said, or even higher. And errors like that will not have uh, rain or shine, will not allow rain or shine to uh, cut into that lead. One of the nicest guys around in Philippine basketball is Kaloy Garcia. I can, cannot imagine him reading the riot act of his team. Uh, it will take a great speech, really, this halftime to turn this around. Did you ever have a coach that didn't say anything? Well, you know, actually, sometimes... The best messages are sent, are said without even a word. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea about Kaloy. We'll find out later on. In the meantime, crowd agog over this last play. They call it a foul against Artadi. Well, we didn't really have a good angle, but uh, Paul Artadi felt like he really got a lot of ball. Some things in 20 years have not changed. And Ebra still feels when they don't get a good call, the whole crowd reacts to them. You like the al defensive alertness of Hinebra in this play. Yeah, they, they're moving extremely well laterally. You know, that means that they really are focused on what they have to do. They practice what they have to do, and they're doing it. And uh, it's all about defense. No matter how good you are, or no matter how depleted your lineup is, if you can stop the other team from scoring, then obviously you're going to have the lead. And you, uh, having, you having played at this level, you have to encourage each other, lalo pag napapagod yung isa on the defensive end. Eh? You know, I always felt that defensively, it can make you feel better so that your offense will work. But offensively, if you play really good offense, not a lot of people will play better defense because they're playing good offense. Yes. Artadi is whistled for his second personal foul, a minute and five remaining. A good defense right here on the part of uh, Rob Wainwright. Now usually those adjectives we have reserved for Barangay Hinebra here in this first half. Yes. Gatorade halfway point time. He's been in this entire half. 
And that's our Gatorade halfway point. 50 to 36 count. And uh, Norwood saying hi to his friends on the uh, Barangay Hinebra bench. Boy, you can sense from the coaching staff of Barangay Hinebra, let's just win this one. And, you know, wait for the import. Uh, let's get through this one. Mack with a difficult hook shot. He's looking for a foul. Yells at the referee. 48 seconds remaining in the first half, that is. Wing right, corner three. Yes! Brought down to 11. Alter Brand and Mank working on this pick and roll. Swinging it outside to Artadi. Alter Brand free for a three. Sharp. The rebound blocked by Intal. Intal has been uh, showing signs of a good nose for the ball in this first half. Uh, actually, the whole Barangay in Ebra have really gotten a good share of those offensive rebounds. 13 offensive rebounds here in the first half. That's four more than Rain or Shine. And usually those offensive rebounds that they picked up, Sev, yung mga nahuhulog na na bola, uh -oh. or, you know, these are almost loose ball varieties. So that really shows that they're the team that they're playing with a lot more passion in the first half. Passion, also typified by Intal's seven rebounds. And down now to 19.1 seconds. It's a Friday night here at the Big Dome, and we're glad uh, you're with us. And mga kayo naroon sa ating masayat masigasig na bansa. Sa mga nanonood sa Kabisayan, maayang gabi kaninyong tanan. May bang rabi sa Ilocos. At uh, tama na, baka hindi naman niwala sa akin pag sinabi kong uh, sa ibang lugar. But this one, being controlled by Hinebra, although not without a run by Rain or Shine towards the latter portion in the last, especially in the last two plays. Last shot, second time. Kanina sabi ni Halter Bankerta, nice pass, sorry. Hindi ko lang maishoot. I love watching the body language of the players, uh, especially when they, we don't really hear them. Too bit thought about it. Brings it in closer. Ni Yoyo ng konti. Maybe he should have taken the shot. Uh, definitely, because they didn't get a shot up. No matter what, if he took that shot, that would have been an attempt. And uh, he'd rather have an attempt than just let that 24-second uh, shot clock go up. Baka siguro yung pagkat ni Meng. Napaka-tempting itisof, eh, no? But that also shows what, how Barangay yeah, is playing point. today. Yeah, they, really, to they really want to share that basketball. Very far from a team that uh, really struggled offensively with Rodney Liento and uh, even struggled in the field. Quick release. Nice release. Had a chance. 50-39 is the count we will springboard from when we stop, start rather the third quarter. Now a bit of the change in the Mother Life leading scorer parade. Lewis beginning to creep in to the totem pole. And uh, we're waiting uh, for RQ to send it to Cheska Litton who has a quick chat with Eric May. Alright Eric, before the game you said that there's no pressure on your team since everyone was expecting you to lose. How do you think that's turned out for you guys so far? Well, you know, I think uh, Rain or Shine kind of underestimated us a little bit. They got to a slow start, but they played us tough the last three minutes and got back in the game. So, long way to go. Your other concern was being in shape for this game after being gone for so long. How are you feeling after the first half? I feel fine, but like I said, I only been practicing for a week. So, but, you know, that's a concern going into the second half. But, you know, you just go as, as hard as you can go to hopefully it'll last to the end of the game. All right. Thank you so much, Eric. Back to you, Seven Jason. We forgot to check the banana queue, no? but mm -hmm. I'm sure Cheska will ask that next time. What can they say? Banana queue. Banana queue. Break one of the tile. We'll be back then. Break down this first half.